Hey everybody, welcome to this mini movie review. This review is on 2020's The Stylist. So The Stylist is an American horror drama film. Apparently it's based on a short film from the director with the same name. It stars Najara Townsend and Bree Grant. It was released September 25th, 2020 at Fantastic Fest. It runs approximately 90 minutes. I saw that it was like an hour and 45 minutes, so we'll see. Maybe I have like an extended version or something. I've heard about it before. It's on my list of movies I wanted to watch. And so when I saw it was coming out on Shudder, I was like, cool, yeah, I'll watch it and let's do a review on it. So it's basically about this woman who is a hairdresser and gets she starts to get too involved in her clients' lives, obsessed with them. And it kind of, it leads to murderous results. So I'm excited to watch this movie. I'm going to go check it out. And yeah, I'll be back to let you know what I think. Okay, so I watched The Stylist. Let's get into it. First of all, it's called The Stylist, but it's also stylish. I really liked how it looked. Just from the beginning, from the font, when it said The Stylist, and like on this fancy font, I was like, oh, okay. And yeah, it definitely, it's a, it's a stylish looking movie. There's these uh, fun like panning shots and these like split screens. And I just, I liked the way it was shot. I really liked this movie. I thought it was really fun and gross and really more of like a psychological thriller or something or like a drama more than a straight out horror movie. At least for me, that's fine. I'm fine with that. Let's get into it. Uh, this is this movie, The Stylist, was based on a previous short that came out starring the same woman who plays Claire, the hairdresser, I believe is uh, Najara Townsend, who I really liked. I thought she did a really good job in this. Besides it being, I mean, yes, she's crazy or insane or whatever, but there's also a lot of feelings of tension and loneliness and kind of how hard it is to make a friend as an adult or just like the life of a hairdresser. Let me just break it down a little bit. So it starts out with this really great opening scene, which I haven't seen the short, but I would guess the short was probably something similar to this opening scene. But it's like this woman, Claire, and her clothes are really cute. She's got really pretty like red hair and she's got these cute like kind of like mod 60s type clothes. Lots of mustards and burnt oranges or greens and I don't know. It just looks really, it's not necessarily, necessarily something I'd wear, but it looked really good on her. And she works at this place in the city or whatever. She's in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, I think, or Kansas City, Kansas, somewhere around there. So she works there and there's a couple other people and it's nighttime. This other woman comes in and she's from out of town and she needs to get her roots done or something like that. So they start talking and it seems like Clarity knows a little bit about her, which I'm not, they don't really go back on that later, but the woman's basically there for work, but she feels like she, you know, because first of all, when you're a hairdresser, sometimes people like to talk. I normally don't really, I don't really like getting my hair cut. So like when I get it cut, I'm like, let's just do this. You know, we, we'll make small talk and things like that, but I'm not like going to tell them everything. You know what I mean? But some people do. And so she hears a lot of crazy stories. And so the woman was basically saying how she has a, a husband and a son and, and she feels like her marriage is falling apart, but then she's also having an affair. And besides the guy she's having an affair with, I think the hairdresser is the only person she told and just all this stuff. Like she's just talking all over. And so everyone else in the place leaves because they're they're done with their clients. And it's one of those places where it's got, it's a cool, it's a cute shop. And then it's got like this brick and it's like kind of dark in there. So Claire was like, oh, you want some wine to relax? And she's like, yeah, okay. So she gives her this wine. Well, the wine was drugged. So then after everyone leaves, she goes over and shuts down, like closes the door and turns the sign and everything. But what's weird to me and what I thought was weird is she took this like white cloth and just like laid it over the door. Like that was supposed to block everyone from seeing what she was about to do. So what she does is the woman passes out. She scalps her there in the store, which I don't like that stuff. I didn't even think about the whole, I mean, I knew she was going to like, I knew some of the stuff, but I, they really lean into the scene of her peeling back this woman's head. Like I was like, it's a lot. <laughs> and then she just cleans up the mess. She mops everything up, whatever she does with the body. She goes, and then she goes back home and she's got this little tiny chihuahua named Pepper. 
in the basement is where she's got this like dressmaker dummy in there and like all these clothes that I guess she takes off her victims and then she has headstands of like the fake dummy heads with different wigs on it. Part of me is like, I don't know if she tans it or not because it probably smells really bad down there because she's got all these scalped heads. And so she gets home and she's she's crying. She goes downstairs and she's crying. She's got Pepper. And I think she plays some music on like a record player or something maybe. It's like she doesn't want to do it, but she, she's compelled. And then she kind of like tucks her hair up and she puts the new wig on with this new girl's hair that's like a dark brown bob kind of cut. And she starts imitating what the woman was saying. Cheating on her husband and things like that. So she like gets to act these different personas. And that's what she does. Things start getting more crazy after this. So she wears that, uh, the hair, you know, the scalp thing. And there's like a line, like a bloody line across her head where the hair meets, or where the scalp meets her scalp. So then there's this woman, Olivia, who she's done her hair for before. Claire's really good at what she does. Olivia is played by, I think, I believe it's Brie or Brea Grant. She was good. I liked her too. I thought they played off each other well. Olivia's getting married. And the guy's kind of a douche. It doesn't seem like they should get married. And it seems like Olivia's having a lot of second thoughts. But she was going to get her hair done and the hairdresser fell through. So she starts like texting Claire because that's kind of what her clients do. She has these clients that text her and be like, oh, can you help me or whatever. But there's that whole sadness to Claire of how people only want her for her hair skills, you know, and she doesn't know how to really make a lot of friends. So Olivia's like, oh my gosh, please do my hair for my wedding. She doesn't like to do weddings, but she agrees to do it. She meets up with uh, Olivia at the shop does her hair. It really didn't look like anything that special. I mean, it just was like loopy thing, trussle things going down and like her hair up. But it was like to kind of like show her what she was going to do. So Olivia is having second thoughts about marrying her husband. And so she, um, she basically invites Claire over to see her dress. Claire's like, okay, well, I guess I should bring wine. You know, like in her head, it's like almost like she's like, that's what people do, right? So she shows up to uh, Olivia's house when her husband's out and they start talking and they have like some pizza and she's just so awkward. Claire doesn't know what to do, but she's also got these compulsions. She ends up stealing uh, Olivia's scarf and they start talking a little about their lives and you find out that Olivia didn't really know her dad. Claire like implies she didn't either, but then like her mom also had some issues too. Like she was a hairdresser and then I think she like was an alcoholic. Just didn't have a great life with her mom. And then her mom had all these different personas and stuff, which later I kind of started tying together with her wearing the other heads or the scalps, you know, and being like trying all these different personas, kind of like her mom did. She was like, oh, my mom would always come home. She always was dyeing her hair a different color. And I never knew who she was going to be and all this stuff. And that kind of comes into play later with the different hairstyles. And she notices women's haircuts and things like that, and which ones she wants to wear. And so she eventually agrees to be Olivia's hairstylist for the day of the wedding. And so she slowly starts becoming more and more obsessive about Olivia, kind of stalking her, meeting up with her when she gets out of work, and to the point where it's getting a little, like, it's uncomfortable. It's pretty uncomfortable. Olivia invites her out to, like, a bachelorette party. She overhears that some of her friends are, like, weirded out that she's there as the hairdresser. I guess they assume she has another life and friends, but it's like, she wasn't being weird or anything, really, so I don't know why they were, like, so put off. Everyone just got drunk and danced anyway. So she's all bummed out, and so, like, Olivia's like, you're getting a little crazy, you need to calm down, this is not how people talk to each other. But then she's still willing to use her as her hairdresser. It seems a bit narcissistic, or you're not willing to find anyone else because you definitely have to have this hairdresser. I know it's a couple days to your wedding. But it's like, if she's mentally unwell and it's making you this uncomfortable, then maybe don't have her come to your wedding. I don't know. It just seemed weird that she was like, oh, well, you know, we still need her. They were basically, I guess, just keeping her around till after the wedding. It was uncomfortable all around. Also in between this, when Claire gets upset, she kind of stalks other people in the, in the life of Olivia as well as her own. There's this coffee shop owner that she kills and just like throws her body, you know, in the back in a trash bag. There's, you know, other scalpings and, and killings. Some of it gets a little sloppy. Some of the stuff that she gives them to put them to sleep doesn't always work and things like that. And so she's just really frustrated. The day of the wedding happens. She goes there and there's like, you know, her bridesmaids, you know, the chicks from the bachelorette party and um, Olivia's mom and like this little girl and she's doing the hair for everyone, I think, or for most of the people. Olivia's like kind of nervous, you know, and everything and everything seems to be going okay. And I knew I had heard something that the ending was kind of crazy, but I didn't, I wasn't sure what it was. I liked the ending, but I also thought it was a little weird because Olivia was already having these weird feelings about how Claire was. Just because they kind of agreed that things were okay now, like everyone left her alone with Claire to like finish up her hair and everything like that. And so they all left her alone. So then it comes to the wedding and everyone's up there waiting. Everyone has walked down the aisle. They're waiting for the bride, you know, bah, 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 bah. you know, they're like getting all the music. Everyone's excited. 
And that was when I was like, I know what this is going to be. Oh, goodness. This is going to be something. So, you know, Olivia's coming down the thing. She's got the veil over her eyes, her face. Like, it's can't really see anything. She gets to her husband. You know, everyone's real happy. He goes to take the veil back. And when he pulls it back, for a split second, it looks like Olivia. But it's not. It is Claire. Claire has scalped Olivia, is in the wedding dress, and wearing Claire's hair. The way that she did her hair. It takes her husband like a second or fiance and then he sees the line of like the blood above her head and he figures it out and he just he's like is this a joke and like everyone's looking around and the mom finally looks to see who it is and they all take off running and she's just sitting there with a big smile on her face and then like kind of the smile fades like oh did i do something crazy (laughs) and then you hear the mom and everyone screaming in the other room and so she has scalped olivia and portrayed her in the wedding I liked the ending because it was just so off the wall and I thought it was kind of fun. I just didn't think they would leave her them alone for that long. She wouldn't have enough time. She had to put on the dress, knock her out, scalp her and everything before coming down. Like they weren't gone that long. So I find that a little hard to believe, but I really thought it was a fun ending and just watching everyone and then like just screaming and then that's it. Then it ends. She finally gets caught. She definitely needed some help. There was times during it where I was like, oh honey, you just need, (laughs) you need to see someone, someone to help you. But I really liked it. It was a good, like, tense, well-shot, pretty movie that had some really just good drama stuff in it. There's some other scenes that are a little out there, you know, that are in uh, the going on with it. And just, yeah, definitely checking out. I don't want to, I mean, I I don't want to go, like, play-by-play on this one. Uh, Just go check it out. I've been thinking about how I don't even want to do ratings, really, because it changes all the time. For me, I'm not sure if there's like a completely perfect movie that anything I would give a 10. But then it's like, if I really, really love the movie, it doesn't matter. So I'm not sure if I even want to give it a rating, but I did really, really like it. <sighs> Just for fun, if I was going to rate it. See, it kind of negates all the other ratings I've given other movies because I feel like I'd bump those up now. I'd be a little more generous. Like I want to give this one maybe like a, a seven and a half or something. Yeah, so check out 2020's The Stylist. Yeah, thanks so much for listening. Bye.